بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالہ رخان ہیر and today you know with the last video on the continuous time four year series you would have seen that i have stretched it very much i have I've worked very much in it a lot of videos you might have got got bored but the objective is you know this is the basic you understand the continuous time four year series i will not go in that sort of a detail in the discrete time four year series and similarly now this is the base for the fourier transform as well so this was the base so that why i got a little you know slow in this and I stretch this topic today is the last video of this topic in which I would try to wrap up the thing so if anything I've missed uh, or you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section if you want me to have any video on something you can definitely tell me in the comment section the comment section is for you guys okay so first of all uh, this is from the previous video the relationship between uh, Fourier coefficients so I said over here that this was from exponential to trigonometric so basically this was from trigonometric to exponential and this one I said from trigonometric to exponential so this was from exponential to trigonometric and I would try to write it over there as well while editing but still we are gonna we may use it in this video so I therefore I wrote it over here now uh, starting of the topic the Fourier series so why do we use Fourier series you know it very well we have already seen it from the mathematics point of view we say what that to represent any non sinusoidal periodic signal in terms of sinusoids so we use the the, the Fourier series right so let's say we have a signal we have a signal and then we talked about the complex exponential signal the complex exponential signal right so if this is my time axis this is my any general signal is given like this let's say this is a periodic square wave fine and this is repeating in such a manner so have a look isn't this my time period it is fine so now if I represent this in terms of harmonically related exponentials so what does that term harmonically related means or what is the harmonics what is harmonic so harmonic is basically you saw it that this was depending on the frequency of the wave so if I said that I had a term exponential of J omega naught T if I had omega naught this was the first harmonic exponential of J 2 omega naught t this was having the frequency double this was the second harmonic similarly j3 omega naught t was having frequency three times and it was the third harmonic so this means what this is this sort of a wave now if this is the time period so if i say that i have a sinusoid this so if this is my sinusoid this is my first harmonic the fundamental frequency component this is known as the fundamental frequency component or you call it what the first harmonic why because its frequency is equal to the frequency of the original wave now if I have another component another component another sinusoid so have a look its frequency is two times the frequency of our original wave which means that this is now sine of 2 omega naught t so I would say that this is my second harmonic because this has the frequency twice the original wave which means it has time period half of the original wave which means what that in the in the time where my original signal is completing half of the cycle over there the, this is completing full cycle similarly you have three omega naught t so that would be the case where in this particular time period the sign will complete its three cycles fine so this is what the term harmonics mean okay that was what i wanted to mention now what do we have is what do we have let's say we take some questions now let's say we take some questions so I'm given a given a Fourier series representation of a signal I have a question that the Fourier series representation of a real signal is what is such that x of t is equal to summation 
summation I have n running from negative infinity to positive infinity 3 upon 4 plus 3 n pi whole squared exponential of j pi t exponential of j n pi t and yes j n pi t so I have an n over here as well fine so this is the Fourier series representation of a signal is given now you can see from here this is the synthesis equation right and now we are asked some questions so the first is to find the the fundamental period t naught right the the second is to find the average value of the signal that we represent by a naught the third is to find this would this question says that it was consist of a term a naught cause of a naught cause of 6 pi t so find this a naught fine and the next question the last question is that it would consist of a b naught sine of 6 pi t so find this b naught fine so we get started with it we get started with it so have a look now we were we are asked what we are given this in the form of complex exponentials and you see that so the question is asked in form of trigonometrics because we have a n and b n in form of trigonometrics a naught is equal to c naught we know this in both the cases so if i say number one a naught is equal to c naught and what would be this c naught so this would be equal to this term this is my cn or ck you don't get confused in n and k in the previous video also i believe there would be a confusing point in n and k so don't have to confuse it these are the simple relations i wrote in terms of n okay and this cn represent that a k i wrote in this synthesis equation so you don't have to confuse it anyways c naught will be equal to a naught so what do we have we put n is equal to 0 in this particular equation in this particular equation so i would have a 3 upon 4 plus and this would come out to be 0 whole squared so which implies that the average value which is which was asked is 3 upon 4 fine so this was the second part and I missed the first. So no problem, this is the second. Now for the first, we know, uh, with time period, fundamental time period T naught is unknown. So for that we know to know the fundamental uh, frequency of the wave. So you can see that this I have an exponential of j n by t. And we know that generally the synthesis equation is written like this. If I'm talking of n over here as well, so we have a c n exponential of j n omega naught t. So if you match it, you have a j, you have an n, you have a t, omega naught is equal to pi. Omega naught is equal to pi. So which means what? We know that t naught would be equal to 2 pi upon omega naught. So this implies that our time period is equal to 2. Second, millisecond, whatever we are not interested. This is the next part. Fine. The third part is to find such a naught where if you expand the signal you have an a naught cause of 6 pi t. So if you see an a naught cause of 6 pi t we know that this would be equal if we, we know generally generally this is what this is like this a n cause of n omega naught t right. So we know that our fundamental frequency is pi so this pi is representing omega naught right and then n this 6 is representing n n is representing 6 which means that we are asked to find the sixth harmonic amplitude so which means that a naught is basically a 6 which we are finding so we are given over here in terms of exponentials we are asked trigonometric so i can have uh, trigonometric to exponential no i need exponential to trigonometric so exponential to trigonometric i need a n so a n is two times the real of c n which means if i need a 6 so my a 6 would be two times the real of c6 and if you see so this is only a real signal we don't have any imaginary part so what do we do i take just two times c6 which is two times and, and c6 would be what this would be three and then you have a four plus three multiply six multiply pi whole squared and and you multiply it to get your value to get your value you you, you do it yourself fine the next the fourth is what the fourth is you need to find your b naught sine of 6 by d so again if you compare with the general so the general b n it's like this b n sine of n omega naught t 
So pi is omega naught, n is 6 this means, n is equal to 6 again, so which means that if I am needing to find b naught, this means I have to find b6. And b6 I need to find, so I need to multiply this over there, have a look, it's minus 2 times the imaginary part of c6, and the imaginary part of c6 is 0, so this b6 would equal 0. This was a real signal, the imaginary part was 0. That is it. That is it for this question. Is that fine? The next question is, the Fourier series expansion for sine squared of x. So if I write it over here, the Fourier series expansion for and over here they have written f of x is equal to sine squared of x is and and we already we also have options a b c and d so let me write sine of x plus sine of 2x sine of x plus sine of 2x 1 minus cos of 2x cos of x plus sine of 2x cos of x plus sine of 2x and the final option is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 times cos of 2x. Now what do you think? So you can pause the video of course and you can think of it and then play it back. So I hope you have given it a try. Now what you have is we can write it like what? I can solve it directly as well okay. If I we know that uh, cos of 2x is equal to, no, leave cos of 2x, we know that sine square x is 1 minus cos of 2x by 2. We know that very well. I've been using it, you know. I've been using that sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cos of 2x upon 2. So this I have been using. And this comes out to be what? 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 times cos of 2x. So which means that option D is the correct option. How did this come? So this is the mathematical proof. I don't have anything to do with it. But still, if I see, if you say so, I would write it. Cos of 2x is basically equal to cos squared of x minus sine squared of x. So I've written this proof for myself. And then again, cos squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. Cos squared is 1 minus sine squared of x. And then you have minus sine squared of x again. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x and sine squared x is again this thing. So which means we have got this. We have got the answer. Still you want to, if you want to have it from the signal and system approach. So we can do it again over here as well. So let me remove the board first. Okay. So solving the question. So I've removed it, let's say I write it over here, f of x is sine squared of x. Now you know it, we have studied the properties, I can write it into sine of x multiplied sine of x, right? And now have a look, aren't these two signals in, in product form? So how to find their Fourier series of Fourier coefficients? If two signals are multiplied, their Fourier series would be, Fourier coefficients would be convolved, yes. So, if this signal has coefficient a k, this has b k, so the product of them, if have Fourier coefficient c k, so those would be equal to the convolution of a k and b k. And you know what, that they are a of 1 is equal to 1 upon 2 j, a of minus 1 is negative 1 upon 2 j, right? You know this, right? a1 is also equal to b1 is 1 upon 2j and similarly a of negative 1 which is also equal to b of negative 1 is negative 1 upon 2j. Is this clear? Yes. So I, I write it what? I write it in the tabular form that I did for convolution. So if I have my a k, so this would be equal to like this. You have a negative 1 you have. So I would write it up uh, j as well. j is downward. j is downward j is over here. So I would shift the j upwards. So I would have a positive j by 2. I would have a 0 and then I would have a negative j by 2. And similar would be the case for bk also. 
my BK would also be equal to positive J by 2, 0, negative J by 2. Now, to, to do what? To convolve them together. So, I have the tabular method I told you, AK, BK. If you are given signals in this tabular form, you can have this sort of a simple convolution. J by 2, 0, minus J by 2. J by 2, 0, minus J by 2. So, the convolution would be what? J, J, J squared, negative 1 upon 4, 0, uh, negative then positive 1 upon 4 then the entire row is 0 then you have what positive 1 upon 4 0 negative 1 upon 4 isn't it like this negative 1 upon 4 0 positive and then positive and then negative yes now what do you do you make the pairs so this is number 1 these are 2 these are 3 these are 2 and this one again so what would be my CK so I would write my CK over here. If I write it over here, so my CK would be, this is a negative one of four, four, zero, negative one upon four, then zero, then you have one upon four plus one upon four, one upon two, zero, and negative one upon four. And what about the origin? So have a look. This was the origin of the first one. This was the origin of the second one. So it had previously one term. This also has previously one term. So that would have one plus one, uh, two terms. So after the second term, we would have the origin. So this means that one upon two would be our origin in this particular case. Now, if I write it like that, if I write it uh, in exponential series form, so if I have my f of x, so this is in terms of k, k or n or whatever, yes, k, k running from negative infinity to positive infinity, and I've written a ck to this, so exponential of j k omega naught t. So I have an a z, c0, c2, c minus 2. So I would write, I would expand it like this, that I would have a c of minus 2, exponential of minus j2, omega naught t right then i would have a plus c zero exponential of j zero omega naught t and then finally i would have a plus c two exponential of j two omega naught t and if i write the values so this would be a negative one over four this would be one over two this would be positive one over four isn't it like this? It is. So this j omega naught t, this is 1, fine. This is 1. Uh, so I would write it like this. I would write it as 1 upon 2 and then plus or if I take the negative 1 over 4 common. <clears throat> so I would have negative 1 over 4 common exponential of j 2 omega naught t plus exponential of negative j2 omega naught t, fine. So have a look, isn't this coming out to be the cost term if I multiply and divide it by a 2. So if this is my 2, this is 2, so you would have what? If you would have 0 0.5 minus 2 upon 4 is 1 upon 2, 0 0.5 and this would be cause of 2 omega naught t. So this is the answer and this is the same answer. Isn't it like this? Yes, it is. So, that's it for this question. The next, let's say I take a short question. So, let's say I write it over here. The question and we have a periodic square wave or something like that. Let me check first. This is my dx is x of t is what? Not a, yes, some sort of like that. Coming down, up, down up similarly like this so this is an objective right this is an objective type question x of t is given it's 2 4 you have a 2 you have a 4 6 8 10 and this continues like this similarly negative 2 negative 4 negative 6 negative 8 this continues on this side this is my x of t the time period that is given is in milliseconds okay the time period is in millisecond, not the time period, the time x is in, in millisecond and you are asked to find the frequency in hertz. The frequency in 
herds, okay? And you are given some options as well. So there's options I would not write. And the frequency of the fifth harmonic. You are asked the frequency of the fifth harmonic. So frequency of fifth harmonic is unknown. Fine. So this F. So what is the question basically? Frequency of the fifth harmonic means what? We are asked to find out five omega naught right but for that we need to know omega naught and for omega naught we need to know the time period right so if the time period is what the time period is this isn't this the time period so we know that the time period is equal to uh, 4 millisecond right and then so what would be the frequency what and have a look over here I, I missed the point over here I wrote 5 omega naught but we are not asked 5 omega naught we are asked 5 f we are asked in Hertz we are asked f okay omega naught is for radian per second that is the angular velocity that is not the frequency in Hertz okay so the frequency is directly 1 upon t which means 1 upon 4 milliseconds 10 raised to the power negative 3 so this goes up so 1 upon 4 is 0.25 or what let me check i would have written it or let me say 1 upon 4 kilohertz directly so i've written a 1 upon 4 kilohertz directly 1 upon 4 is 0 0.25 okay so you, you just write it like this fine now the frequency of the fifth harmonic would be 5 times f okay you have to find 5 times f not 5 omega naught so that would be a 5 upon 4 kilohertz and 5 upon 4 is 1.25 kilohertz and in the option I believe it was 1250 hertz so I would write it 1250 hertz this is for this particular question fine okay the next question I would also like to take uh, a smaller one so not basically this is not small but I would like to make it small so let me remove this space I hope uh, this one is clear right okay now let's say we are given a question x of t I would write q over here this is t x is this is my x of t x is right and the waveform is like this let it go a little fine similarly on this side as well this continues on this side this continues on this side this is time axis the 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 values let me check so it gets down at one it gets back up at two this is one this is 2, this is 3, this was 4. Similarly, this is negative 1, this is negative 2, this is negative 3 and so on. So if you have a look, the time period is 2. The fundamental time period is 2, right? What are we asked basically? We are asked the Fourier series representation of the signal. We are asked the Fourier series representation of the signal. So basically we are uh, given some options, so I, I will not write that options, I would just tell you the correct one. If you see it somewhere, this is, I, I, I took it from some uh, YouTube channel, uh, this is uh, a previous year gate question, you Indians would we have seen this, okay. So, anyway, the four series representation of the signal. So what do I have is, I would tell you what, uh, through, the, through the properties, through the properties, so if you see, uh, if you time reverse it, is it an even signal? Starting off with the, you know, uh, simpler ones, is this an even signal? So if you time reverse it, which means you flip this over here or this over there, so this is an even signal, right? So I would write it over here that this is an even signal, even. So E1 would apply what that my x of minus t would be equal to x of t again. Similarly, if you shift it by half of the time period, over here you could see that the time period is 2. 
the fundamental. So the time period by 2 would be 1. So if you shift it either through the right side or to the left side. So let me say that this uh, negative peak comes here if I shift it. So this would be like this. So won't it be like this? It would be, you know, shifting, right? So this would be this sort of a signal. If I shift it either to the right or to the left. So this is x of t plus minus 1. So which means that this is also half wave symmetrical signal. This is also a half wave symmetrical signal. Half wave symmetrical implies what? That my x of t plus minus uh, uh, t by 2 over here t by 2 is 1. This would be equal to negative of x of t. And you can clearly see it from the green color. So the harmonic properties, we know the harmonic properties for an even symmetrical signal. For this case, B A0 is 0. First of all, the, the DC value is 0. The sign terms are also 0. B N is equal to 0. So you check for those options. A0 is 0. Then the sign terms would also be 0. And further, further you have A N is only non-zero for N equal to even. Or for n equal to odd. So let me check. For n equal to e1. So they are 0 for n equal to e1. Which means non-zero only for odd. So which means you would have to go for that option. Where you would only have odd harmonics of cos terms. Only cos terms of odd harmonics. So you take that option. You take that option and I would also give you that option over here. So that is 8 upon pi squared. This is the final answer. Okay. 8 upon pi squared cos of pi t cos of pi t plus 1 upon 9 cos of 3 pi t plus 1 upon 25 cos of uh, 5 pi t and so on this goes. This is the final answer. Now how to get to this final answer? So you know that uh, omega naught would be the fundamental frequency. Uh, first you need to know the fundamental frequency. So you know t is equal to 2. So this implies that my omega naught would be 2 pi upon 2 which is equal to pi. So omega naught is equal to pi, right? And then to expand into the Fourier series, what do we have? We only need a n. This you know that we only need a n. So a n is equal to what? A n is equal to, uh, I forgot the formula, 2 upon t, 0 to t, 2 upon t, 0 to t, x of t, and this will be multiplied by cos of n omega naught t and this integration with respect to t. So this is what you have. Now uh, you need to know x of t as well. So if I say that my x of t is what? x of t. If this value is plus 1 and this negative is negative 1. So x of t we need to know the equations. So I would write it somewhere over there. I will not rub this. I would write it over here. So this is an enough space for me. If I have my x of t, this x of t, okay, this x of t. So first of all, if this is, you know, one time period till 2. So I need to spread it into two parts, 0 to 1 and then 1 to 2, right? So, so what do you have is, one point and the next point so you know how to do it you know the equation of the line is y is equal to mx plus c m is the slope how to calculate m m is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 change of y upon change of x right and c is then the x and y uh, y intercept right so you have the slope over here have a look y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 this would be negative 2 Negative 2 would be the slope and the x intersect, y intercept over here is 1. So you have a negative 2t plus 1 and where is this lying? This is lying when t is between 0 and 1. Or you could also mention when t is between 0 and time period by 2. Fine. And similarly then over here have a look again. 
so these are the two points this was the first point this is the second point again but this is a, now increasing so this would be a plus to the the slope so this equation is 2t and what about the y intercept so if you put t is equal to 0 over there or whatever you do by any method you you try it graphically you shift it this is negative one so that is one unit apart if you shift it over here this would go to one unit downward two unit downwards so this would be a negative three you know how to calculate these are mathematical things i'm not going to discuss it over here so this is from one to two or you could say this is from time period by two to two so now what do you have would you put this over here which means you have to uh, 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 to, to split this integration first this 0 to t okay so t 2 upon t would remain outside and then you split the integration first from 0 to t by 2 which is 1 and then plus you x of t would be this particular thing multiply with cos of n omega t plus and then you do it with t by 2 to t x of t would now be 2 t minus 3 multiplied with this and this would give you the final result that you come up with would be this is your final answer and you know i am very weak in this integration and this integration is not in the scope of this course coming to this course you know integration you have your mathematical videos mathematics courses you know it way better than me okay so you solve it yourself you get this answer let me have one more question please i believe you're not getting bored so i remove the board first all of it okay in this particular question we are given the magnitude and the phase spectrum of the Fourier coefficients so first let's say I take the magnitude of it let me take my copy so I may give this a speed okay in editing so this is okay so this is the question fine now uh, we are asked uh, some a number of questions the first is the fundamental frequency omega naught the second is the symmetry that exists in the signal the third is to find the total power the fourth is to find the rms value and the last is to find the signal x of t itself so now this is where it would get a little longer no problem now coming to the first part so starting off with the simpler ones you have what that uh, part a omega naught omega naught would be what you would take the highest common factor the greatest common divider of the frequencies that are existing this you know it very well omega naught would be the hcf of the frequency that are present over here 18 pi 30 pi and 42 pi so which means that my omega naught you know this would come out to be 6 pi isn't it 6 pi it is now if i am asked about the time period of the wave as well so this implies that my time period of the wave would be 2 pi upon omega naught 2 pi upon 6 pi 1 upon 3 would be my time period of the wave fine now the second the second is what we are asked to find the symmetry so if you have a look to the to the uh, questions to, to the to the graphs so you see that a naught first of all the dc value you check a naught is not equal to zero fine then if you see then if you see so what do you have the phase angles of a k are only either a plus 80 degrees or a minus 180 degrees fine then what about the harmonics 
so if this is omega naught is 6 pi so 18 pi means this is for k equal to 3 this is for k equal to 3 or let me write it with the red color I haven't used the red color you know in this video k is equal to 3 for 30 pi means 6 pi so this is the fifth harmonic and 42 pi means this is the seventh harmonic so it means that I only have odd harmonics I only have odd harmonics only odd harmonics so so now you should know what 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 symmetry exists and let me tell you that this is the hidden symmetry and the hidden symmetry is what a, a naught is equal to zero and this is for uh, hidden symmetry and only odd harmonics are for half wave symmetry so you could say that you have a hidden symmetry and what is that hidden symmetry or you could say we have a half wave symmetry so we have can combine both the points this is about the symmetry the third the third is to find the the what the rms value no it's first the power so if the power so we know from the parseval's relation that the power would be equal to k running from negative infinity to positive a k whole squared the magnitude of a k whole squared so what is the magnitude of this so first you have one squared plus five squared plus four squared plus three squared plus four again squared plus five again squared plus one again squared you do this one twenty five twenty six sixteen uh, thirty nine you, you you get this a 93 you get this a 93 yes the power is equal to 93 fine the next part is the rms value so you know that rms is under the root of the power so which implies that my rms value for this function is under the root of 93 that is it about it fine all right now the last part the signal uh, x of t is unknown itself so we know that our signal that they have written over here f of x in terms of k so that would be a summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential of j k omega naught t how would I write it so we know now the, the the terms we know it very well so I have this is for k equal to negative 7 right so I would write an a of minus 7 and exponential of what exponential of negative j 7 omega naught is uh, 6 pi let me write omega naught t then you have 5 plus a of minus 5 exponential of negative j 5 omega naught t then you have 3 a of minus 3 exponential of negative j 3 omega naught t then a naught then a 3 again a 3 exponential of j 3 omega naught t then a 5 again and finally a 7 again fine so let me check this message this is urgent okay now what do we have is what do we have is so uh, uh, we know the values of it we know the values and we also know the phases we know that a k would be equal to what this is the Fourier series expansion and we know what that our a k is equal to the the magnitude of a k multiplied the phase and the phase we are writing exponential of j theta is that fine so it means now that my f of x could be written in this form f of x what form a of minus 7 so a of minus 7 the magnitude is 1 the angle is exponential of j minus 180 degrees so minus j 180 degrees and this is then multiplied with an exponential of negative j 7 omega naught t fine then plus a of negative 5 is 5 the phase is 
the phase is plus 180 degrees so exponential of j plus 180 degrees and then multiplied with negative j5 omega naught t then plus a of minus 3 is 4 the phase and i have a mistake no the phase could be 0 right 18 and 42 18 and 42 Yes, so 5 has a phase 0, 18 and 42 only. So 5 has a phase 0, so you could write it an exponential of 0, and it's multiplied with what? Uh, an exponential of negative j5 omega naught t. Isn't it like this? Were we talking about 3 or were we talking about? I was talking about this 4, exponential of 0. Uh, this is for k equal to 3 so this is minus j 3 omega naught t I hope it's correct now then you have an a naught so a naught is what a naught is 3 and uh, this exponential it does not have any phase so this would be 3 then you have a plus a 3 is 18 no not 18 this is 4 multiply with an exponential of uh, minus 180 degrees j and uh, this is further multiplied with this thing j3 omega naught t then for a5 what do you have you have a 5 is the magnitude the phase is not present over here okay so have i made any mistake yes i have a mistake over here somewhere i would check it okay i would check it so for 5 we, at 30 pi we don't have a phase and then exponential of j5 omega naught t yes finally and finally we have plus 1 exponential of that is a plus 180 degrees and exponential of j7 omega naught t let me check it again so <clears throat> So have a look over here. This is first for this term at 42 pi. So this is 1 and exponential of negative j7 omega naught t. So I would write over here as well. Negative 7, this is negative 5, this is negative 3. So negative 7 omega naught t and the phase at negative 42 is negative 180 degrees. This is fine. Then you have a plus a 5, then exponential of j. 5 omega naught t minus 5 omega naught t and what is the phase at 30 pi so that is 0 and this is the mistake that is 0 and this is the mistake right then this is at 3 uh, at negative 3 so exponential of negative j omega naught 3 4 and what is the phase at 18 pi negative 18 pi it's a plus 180 degrees so so this is a mistake again yes i was talking about this mistake Fine, then you have a plus 3 is 0, then k is equal to 3, j3 three omega naught t, you have 4 and the phase at 18 pi is negative 1, this is fine. Then again at k equal to 5, you have a j, exponential j5 omega naught t, the phase is phase 5 is the magnitude, the phase is 0 at 30, right? And then you have j180, this is fine. Now this is fine. Now if I do one, you know, uh, this change in this thing, so... 7 omega naught I would write by a negative 42 pi right 5 omega naught I would write by a 30 pi 3 omega naught I would write by an 18 pi similarly again 3 omega naught by 18 pi 5 omega naught by 30 pi and 7 omega naught by 42 pi fine now what would we do? We would have to multiply, then we would have to add them f of x. So first I take the value 3, then you have plus exponential of, uh, so if negative j is taken common, you have a 42 pi plus 180 degrees. Fine. Now what do I have? So this I wrote for this, okay. Now the 5 term I have it over here. So let's say first I take the one which does not have any amplitude with 1. So this was for negative 7. Now I take positive 7. I combine it with this one. I combine the phases together. The, 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 the angles. So this would now be a plus. You would have an exponential of. Uh, J would be taken common. So you have a 42 pi t plus 180 degrees is the same again. So have a look. This is the same. 
So 7 is done, minus 7 is done. Now for minus 5, what do you have? You have this one. So I take 5 common, this would be 1, right? So I have an uh, exponential of negative j 30 pi t, right? And then this one, so this would be also 1. So I have a plus 5 is already taken common. I have an exponential of j 30 pi t. Fine. So, so the fifth is also done. Now for the third. Okay. Now the remaining are only these two terms. So have a look. This would be, so I'm, I was getting a little confused in this. So let's say I take plus 4 common and then exponential of what is this? So this would be a j 180 degrees. j 180 minus j 18 pi. And similarly, if, if I add them together, right? And similarly, those would be negative j 180 plus 18 pi. So what do I do is, I take, if I take j common from here, so this would be 180 minus 18 pi. And I need, I don't need it like this, I need 18 pi minus 180, right? So if I take negative j common from here, if I take negative j common from here, so this would be 18 pi, which means this is this term. So which means now that if I take a negative j common from here, so what would I have? I would have an 18 pi minus 180 degrees. 18 pi t minus 180 degrees and then if you if I have a plus so this will be plus I take a plus j common 18 pi minus again j 18 pi t minus 180 degrees so that is it now I can remove this so let me tell you let me tell you I, I you know uh, I, I made it a little confusing if you if you write it in a proper order that is if you write a naught first then you write a negative 7 then positive 7 if you write them in a proper order well this was also proper order after this if you change the order first first you bring them together and then you take the common so then it would be fine but this is also okay now now what do I have is exponential of j theta exponential of minus j theta if I divide and multiply it by a 2, won't this be a cost term? It would be exponential of j theta plus exponential of minus j theta. I multiply and divide it by a 2, won't this be a cost term? Exponential of j theta plus exponential of minus j theta. Multiply and divide by 2, won't this be a cost term? So can I not write it that my f of x is equal to, my f of x is equal to what? 3 plus 2 times cos of, cos of this thing, 42 pi t plus 180 degrees. Then plus 10 times cos of 30 pi t. Then plus 8 times cos of 18 pi t minus 180 degrees and now you know this again that if you have cos of theta some cos of theta uh, this would be equal to cos of theta plus minus 180 degrees so which means that I'm getting into my final answer and my final answer is that f of x is equal to what my f of x is equal to 3 plus 2 times cos of 42 pi t plus 10 times cos of 30 pi t and plus 8 times cos of 18 pi t and this is my final answer. So that is it. That should be it now. So I hope this is clear. Fine. I hope that this is clear. Now what do I have it? Let me just you know draw a simple table and we see what the Fourier coefficients are. How would be the Fourier coefficients for a signal? So this is just the concluding points. You already know this again as well, but, but you know, we need to just write it. So if I say that my nature of signal and nature of Fourier coefficients, if I write over one side my nature of signal, and to the other side, I write the nature of Fourier series coefficient. So if I am using this FSC short term, this means Fourier series coefficient. And you know that very well again. So if my signal is even signal, you know, if my signal is an even signal, so my Fourier coefficients would be conjugate symmetric. Conjugate 
symmetric and what does that mean that a of k minus k would be equal to a k is conjugate a of k a of k would be equal to a of minus k conjugate this is for an even signal and you know this right and similarly the vice versa is also true if my signal is a conjugate symmetric signal so my Fourier coefficients would be even in that case fine then if my signal is odd so the Fourier coefficients would be conjugate anti-symmetric and and what does that mean that my C the conjugate of a minus k would be equal to a of minus k yes and similarly again the opposite if this is conjugate anti-symmetric the Fourier coefficients would be odd similarly if you have the signal to be real plus e1 the Fourier coefficients would be real plus e1 if you have the signal imaginary plus E1, the Fourier coefficients would be imaginary plus E1. Now comes the changing part. If you have the signal to be real plus odd, the Fourier coefficients would be imaginary plus odd. And similarly now if these are imaginary plus odd, the signal is imaginary plus odd, your Fourier coefficients would be real plus odd. Real plus odd that is it that is it and so you you should focus on these two you should not mix it up directly that is it that is it for today that is it for today is this sort of a longer video thank you very much for your patience for watching this video if you have watched it full i hope you have understood the topic of Fourier series i hope you have understood today's questions that is it for me as well. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah, with the topic of discrete time Fourier series. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And do remember me in your prayers. And please subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.